Hello everyone, good morning. Um, this is Teresa here. I just wanted to share um, something I, that God's been putting on my heart and he's really been speaking to me personally about and I know that this is something that is for everyone. This is something that every believer, every Christian, and even if you're not a Christian, can benefit from. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, start us off in prayer. Thank you for tuning in. Lord, right now in Jesus' name, Lord God, I just thank you for your presence, Lord God. Father, I just thank you for all that you've been revealing, Lord God, all that you've been in unveiling, Lord God. Lord God, and I pray right now, Lord God, that you would draw us closer to you, Father, even in this broadcast, Lord God. Father, that you begin to draw us nearer to you, Father, that you would teach us your ways, God, that we might find favor with you, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, you know, um, what God's, I'll just kind of share first, um, what God's been dealing with me on is a friendship. You know, I know it sounds kind of, kind of strange, but he's been talking to me about friendship, you know, and how much, you know, we can get caught up in who's our friend and who's not our friend, but we forget and to ask ourselves the vital question of, is the Holy Spirit my friend, you know, and what kind of life does it take to have the Holy Spirit? abiding and dwelling constantly with right so think about this have you ever had a friend that didn't want to hang around you for certain reasons you know or have you ever had a friend that you didn't want to hang around for certain reasons maybe they they went and they did stuff they didn't agree with or you didn't like or it was bo it bored you you know maybe they wanted to play video games you didn't want to play video games so it caused you to not want to dwell with them in that moment right it caused you not want to be with them maybe they went and they got high and, and they smoked and they would did whatever and it caused you to not want to be around them because maybe that wasn't something you valued at that time you know so for different reasons, we dwell and we don't dwell with people, right? Maybe it's their attitude. Maybe it's, um, you know, the, the anger that they have. Maybe it's, you know, that they're, maybe they're too happy and you just want to be sad at that moment, right? But there's different reasons why we dwell and we don't dwell. Well, it's the same with God. So there's different reasons why God dwells with us and why he doesn't dwell with us, right? So one of the major reasons why we don't dwell with others and why God doesn't dwell with us is because of honor. Because if if, if you're around somebody and they constantly were dishonoring you, you're like, no, I don't, I don't really like chicken. And they're like, hey, let's go eat chicken tonight. Well, you're not going to really want to feel, you know, welcome. You're not going to, because they, they're not honoring that you don't eat chicken. And they're, you know, kind of being selfish in that way of they're just wanting to go and eat whatever they want to eat without the regard that you're going to be there and you're not going to enjoy it or you're not going to eat it all, you know, just as an example. So, you know, so there's certain requirements of, um, of our lives that when, when we want God to dwell, we have to meet those requirements of who he is. We have to honor his nature and who God is in order for him to abide and to dwell, you know, and just this past week, you know, God's been really speaking to me. I've been kind of making some new friends and, and talking to some different people. And as I've been doing that, you know, um, I was noticing the Holy Spirit kind of like, mm, mm, no, I don't like that. Don't do that. Don't go there. And I was just like, oh Lord, but I wanted to go there. You know, I wanted to hang out with so-and-so, but I felt the Holy Spirit kind of drifting a little bit. And, and maybe you've never experienced that. That's okay. Um, that kind of comes when you've cultivated his presence and you're like, God, I want to live in your presence. And you do, you purposely go after it, which you can start today. If you're like, I want to know what it's like to live in God's presence. You can start that today. Um, but I could feel the Holy Spirit like, oh, I don't like that. Mm. And that if I were to endure that or go, despite what I felt the Holy Spirit not wanting to go, I would, I would ruin, not ruin completely, but you know, I would kind of, fracture or put friction on my relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now that relationship is so very precious and that has to be our number one relationship that we're taking care of is the Holy Spirit, is our relationship with God, right? Our relationship with God matters more than any other relationship. And if we live a life that is constantly, you know, in pursuit of his presence and his nearness and his dwelling with us, then we will find ourselves having to give certain things up and having to leave certain people behind at times because of, of the Holy Spirit wanting to go in this direction and, and 
you know, other people or other situations wanting to take us in this direction. And we can go in that direction. God gives us a free will. We can totally go in that direction. But we'll be putting at stake and putting at risk our relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now, to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit is to live the narrow, the narrow life. The Bible says that broad is the road that leads to destruction, right? And many are on that road. But narrow is the way that leads to life and few that find it. Wow. It says few find that narrow way. Not few are on it, you know, like the broad road. No, few find it. That means those few were searching for it. Those few wanted something more than what this world offered. And they went after it and they found it. And they found that the road was very narrow, you know, now I'm not saying this to discourage you, but I'm saying it because it's the truth. It is the absolute truth that abiding and dwelling with the Holy Spirit and having him as our friends, it's going to take us down a narrow path and it's going to cause us to live a life that many people have not wanted to live. But the Bible says that the narrow road leads to life, right? The broad road leads to destruction and many are on it. So it's easy. It's easy to look at the world and say, oh my gosh, everybody's doing that. And nobody staying home on a Friday night praying. You know what I mean? And nobody doing maybe whatever God is asking you to do in this time. Maybe nobody, maybe God's asking you to air preach at the mall. And you're like, nobody's doing that, God. Well, broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many are on it. So if we're looking for a popularity contest, then that narrow road is not for us, right? But if we're looking for something other than what this world has to offer, if we're looking for more, if we're longing for more, then that narrow road is going to be the only thing that's going to satisfy us, okay? So what are the temptations to take us off that narrow road and ultimately take us out of our friendship and, and proximity with the Holy Spirit? Well, one thing is this scripture here, James 4.4. 4. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity with God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend to the world becomes an enemy of God. So worldliness, let's talk about worldliness really quick. Worldliness is one of the things that keeps us as the enemy of God. Isn't that crazy? And it says friendship with the world. Not even that you're in the world, but that you are friends with the world, right? So let's look. What is in the world? What does that mean? Look at 1 John 2.16. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride in life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Right? So what is in the world? The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride in life. Let's break it down really, really quick. The lust of the eyes. Oh my gosh. You know, look at so-and-so. Look how awesome they look. You know, the lust of the eyes can also be that new purse she got on, you know what I mean? Or, or the or the clothes or the or whatever, you know, the lust of the eyes saying, I see that and I want that, right? The lust of the flesh, where we want to fulfill our sensual desires, right? Maybe we want to go and get high. Maybe we want to have sex outside of marriage. Maybe we want to live in sin and masturbation. And maybe we want to please our flesh, right? Sensually, I want to feel good. Maybe we want to get drunk because of the euphoria and the escape it creates from, uh, for our, from our lives that it creates, right? Um, and then there's the pride in life, okay? So that's the side of us in our flesh that wants to be somebody. I want to prove to everybody, you know, what you got going on. Oh, this is what I got going on. These are my plans. This is who I am, right? The pride in life. The feeling like I want you to know that I'm somebody because I am somebody. And, and it's pride in my life. When Jesus said, he who desires to find life must lose his life. Right, and those who lose their life for Christ's sake will find their life. So it's an inside out, upside down kingdom. I think somebody sings, I think Missy Edwards sings that, you know. It's so true. It's inside out, it's upside down. And the majority of those who live in are surrounded, we're surrounded by in this world are worldly because broad is the road that leads to destruction, right? And narrow is the way that leads to life and few that find it. So if we're going to be the ones that find that narrow way, we're going to be the ones that live outside of the world system, right? We're going to live outside of that, which is going to put us in a category of like a minority in the earth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jesus said, if they love me, they will love you. And if they hated me, they will hate you also. So we can expect that as we're in this earth and we're living in that closeness of the Holy Spirit on the narrow road, that there's going to be some that love us and there's going to be some that hate us, right? So we have to know that 
my relationship with the Holy Spirit matters more to me than the acceptance of the world because I already know to expect love from some and hate from others, right? Those who belong to the Lord and, and, and are on the side of the truth, they're going to love us. But those who are in the world and their, their flesh is hostile toward God, they're going to hate us. And then we're going to have some that hate us until they get saved and God encounters them. And then they're going to love us, right? So, but if we're waiting for everyone to love us and we're waiting for everyone to like us and we're Christians, it's just not going to happen. Because if we want that friendship with the world more than we want friendship with the Holy Spirit, we will compromise and we will grieve the Holy Spirit and we will hurt the Holy Spirit and we will... And I'm not trying to make it a heavy topic, you know what I mean, really, but it is very true. You know, we will offend or grieve or, you know, make the Holy Spirit fall uncomfortable because of our compromise and friendship with the world. Because remember, we cannot be friends with the world, not even in the world. I can't even have friendship with the world because that means enmity with God. That means that I am an enemy of God. And, um, you know, I just wanted to share that, you know, because this is this is the truth. You know, the truth is that we cannot be worldly. And maybe you're asking, you know, how do I not be worldly? I don't know. You know, the one scripture that's really amazing is if we seek him with all our heart, we'll find him. You know, sometimes even in our local churches and places around us, we don't have people pushing us, you know, to, to not be worldly and to be set apart from the world. Because maybe even in our churches, there is some worldliness at times and there's some compromise and there's some friendship with the world. But I guarantee you that God does not lie. And if we seek him with all our heart, we will find him. So if you're seeking righteousness and you're seeking, you know, Holy Spirit, I want to dwell with you. God will show you what to do. If you want it with everything in your whole heart, I guarantee you God will come meet you in that place. If you set apart your time to seek him, if you set apart your, your energy, if you say, God, everything that I am is yours. All my friendships, all my clothes, all my, all my computer, my phone is yours. My friends are yours. My time is yours. My family is yours, God. You are the Lord of my life. Have your way. God will meet you in that place, I'm telling you. And don't be discouraged if you don't hear from him in one one night of prayer. You know, I prayed two hours one night, Lord. Or I prayed 10 minutes, Lord. You know, it was longer than I ever prayed, Lord. Well, the Bible says knock and keep on knocking. Ask and keep on asking, right? So the door will be opened and he will answer. So I just wanted to encourage you with that. Um, you know, to, to really make that decision to be a friend of God and to be a friend with the Holy Spirit and knowing that I cannot be a friend with God and be a friend with the world at the same time. And if I want that beautiful, abiding presence of God where he feels comfortable everywhere I go because I, I am his dwelling place. And he's saying, you know, that text message, I was pleased with that. I'm going to dwell with you. I know it sounds tedious, but it's, it's absolutely possible. You know, You know, when God says, you know, I, I'm pleased with the way you spoke with your, your family. I'm pleased with the way you, you forgave that person. I want the Holy Spirit to be pleased with my life. And I pray that you want the same thing. So I'm just going to pray really quick and close out. So Holy Spirit, I just thank you right now for your presence, Lord God. Holy Spirit, we just value your friendship, Lord God. And I pray right now, Lord God, for all those watching, Father, any struggling with worldliness, Lord God, Father, that you would help us, Lord God, to, to, to break out of worldliness, Lord God, and enter into holy living, Lord God. Father, I pray that you would consecrate us, Father, and set us apart right now, Father. Lord, I thank you that in your word you said, Lord God, that as we're in this earth, Lord God, that we are so journeys. We are pilgrims. We are aliens, Father. And to not give in to the lusts of the world, Lord God, that wage war against our soul, Father. Lord, I pray for a strengthening right now in our spirit, Father. Lord God, that we will be stronger, Father, in our desire for you, Lord God. Father, we would be hungrier for your presence, Lord God. We would be even more thirsty for your presence than ever before, God. And I pray right now, Father, just for an unveiling, God, that you begin to unveil places where we are friends with the world, places of compromise, Lord God, that keep us on the broad road and not on the narrow way, Father. Lord, I just thank you and I praise you, Father, that you, everyone watching, Lord, and even myself, God, that you would lead us and guide us into all truth. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
Amen. Well, thank you so much for watching. Um, God bless you. And I pray that this ministered to you. Um, I'll be posting some more. Um, please subscribe to the channel um, if this blessed you and tell somebody about it. Maybe somebody needs to hear this message. So go ahead and, and share it. Share it with somebody that you feel, hey, maybe this might encourage them in their walk with Christ. Thank you so much and God bless you.